بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ ہیلو ٹو ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو ڈے فائیو اینڈ دس از دا لاسٹ ڈے آف اے سی سی اے پریکٹس ٹو پاس ویبینار آن پیپر ایم اے مینجمنٹ اکاؤنٹنگ ٹوڈے از نائنٹین فیبرری اینڈ دا ویبینار از بینگ آرگنائز بائی اے سی سی اے پاکستان فار مارچ ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی ون ایگزامس اینڈ دس از می ہارس ہنیف یور ٹیوٹر اینڈ دس از مائی واٹس ایپ نمبر First of all, I would like to ask all of you whether my voice and screen is all clear to all of you. I need response from all of you. Come on, I need response from all of you. Uh, all clear? Okay. All right. Uh, let's now move on to the uh, last day. And this is the last day of this practice to pass webinar. Yesterday, uh, we had discussed uh, yesterday uh, we had discussed something and uh, we covered performance measurement we had uh, we had discussed something uh, related to the theoretical aspects and now uh, i am going to discuss the costing area uh, the costing areas uh, uh, the costing area includes absorption costing and a few examples on process costing all right so first of all let's discuss what costing is what costing is basically uh, costing is something the word costing means estimations of cost it means estimations of costs it means estimation of costs for the future activity for the future activity now see activity can be anything Activity can be production. Activity can be marketing. Activity can be services. Activity can be trading. Activity can be uh, renovating your factory. X, Y, Z. Any kind of activity on which cost will be incurred and you are supposed to estimate the cost the process is known as the costing so what is uh, the process uh, the, what, what do you mean by the term costing see it is ing costing it is a process it's a process of estimations estimations of cost for the future activity it is a process of estimations of cost for the future activity and see when we are going to uh, produce the product and uh, as i have said earlier in uh, in uh, probably in the day one of this webinar that paper ma management accounting is majorly focused on production is majorly focused on the manufacturing aspect and when you are going to uh, produce when you are engaged in the production uh, there are different kinds of cost this is my per unit cost this is my per unit cost and that is we have direct material cost we have direct labor cost we have direct expense we have got direct expense and the resulting figure is called the prime cost the resulting figure is known as the prime cost then you will have to add variable production overheads variable production overheads and then the resulting figure the resulting figure is the marginal the resulting figure is the marginal or variable cost of production then you will be adding fixed production overheads fixed production overheads then the total amount will be full production cost the total amount will be what full production cost and these are my cost per unit this is my 
cost per unit and the process is known as the costing costing the uh, costing means that estimation of the cost for the future activity and you are supposed to add direct material direct labor direct expenses and all that stuff now uh, let's have a quick recap of the differentiation between the cost and that is something direct cost and indirect cost that is something direct cost and something indirect cost see direct cost is something which is specifically being applied on uh, on the unit which which is which is visible for instance you are noting uh, this lecture in your register in your notebook and you are holding a pen in your hand see the pen see the pen right now this is a pen you are seeing that there is something direct uh, there is something material uh, in your pen on your pen and the material is the plastic probably the material is the ink the material is uh, the nib of the pen these are something which is directly identifiable you can notice that thing that is the direct cost direct cost is something which is being applied which is directly which is directly traced which is directly traced on units and what are indirect cost indirect cost is something for example uh, you are producing pen and there is a rent of your factory the rent is not being applied on that specific unit the rent is being for the whole factory see anything anything any cost which is for the whole factory indirect cost is something uh, indirect cost is something which uh, which benefits for the whole factory which benefits for the whole factory and not traced not traceable on the specific units it's not traceable on the specific units these are, these are for the whole factory for example the electricity the it, you cannot you cannot even calculate how much one unit uh, uses the electricity because electricity is for the entire factory something which is specifically for the unit that is known as the direct cost and something that is for the whole factory that is known as the indirect cost now both should be related to the production i'm not talking about the non production thing both should be related to the production and uh, we have to include like that way and that will be the production uh, cost that will be the production cost that is the production cost right students i hope that you had noticed that thing uh, you had uh, noticed that thing costing it is an estimation of cost for the future activity costing is the uh, for the future activity and you had added different classification of the cost this is known as the cost classifications uh, yes daniel zadi can you hear me Daniel, can you hear me? I was silent because I gave you time uh, to copy this thing. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was assume, assuming that you people might be aware of my uh, tutoring practice. That when I am silent, that means this is the time to copy. Okay, no problem at all. Uh, so let's move on to the next. Uh, see, uh, in our course, there are different there are different uh, uh, techniques for the costing direct material labor expenses and these are the overheads and now we are going to uh, discuss now we are going to discuss uh, from the examining uh, point of view the absorption costing what absorption costing is it is written here absorption costing it is the costing of overheads see what is written 
it is the costing of overheads what is absorption costing it is a costing of overheads and what does it mean what is it uh, it aims its purpose is to add add means absorb its purpose is to add overheads in the per unit cost its purpose is to add overheads in the per unit cost that is both variable and fixed cost see the last slide this is the last slide you had already you had already added variable and the fixed overheads uh, while calculating the uh, unit cost while calculating the per unit cost you had already you had already included the variable and the fixed overheads all right you had included the variable and the fixed overheads while calculating the per unit cost and that was the purpose and that was the purpose of the absorption costing uh, now what absorption costing aims absorption costing aim uh, what is absorption costing sir it is the costing of overheads simple it is the costing of overheads so simple and what is it purpose what is its aim its purpose is to add absorb overheads in the per unit cost and that is both variable and the fixed overheads all right and that is both variable and the fixed overheads so absorption costing absorption costing aims to add overheads in the per unit cost if you people remember that uh, absorption costing has these stages absorption absorbing overheads this is the absorption costing this is the absorption costing absorbing overheads has the following steps number one is allocation number two apportionment reapportionment and the absorption now first of all i would like to add something here that what do you mean by the term cost center what do you mean by the term cost center what is cost center what is cost center cost center is something you can say cost center is any location cost center is any uh, department cost center is any location it is any department it is any department you can see that it is any department like you can say the production department because production department is not responsible for uh, raising the revenues production department is responsible for producing the goods and obviously this is a production center just like your classroom your tuition center this is a tuition center and you are going to attend your classes all right this is online tuition center uh, the go to webinar through acca platform go, go to webinar this is a tuition center you are having a tuition you are having a, a classes similarly this is a production department it is a cost center and what is cost center on which costs are incurred on which costs are incurred on which costs are incurred see this is not responsible this department is not responsible for the uh, this is not responsible for the uh, for raising the revenue all right so uh, this is what now now see this thing this is cost center this is cost center that means department production department and in the cost center in the cost center cost units are produced cost units are produced in the cost center cost units are produced all right in the cost center cost units are produced now what i am trying to say is that for example imagine there is a room there is a production room that production room is known as the cost center and in that production room you are producing mobile phones the mobile phones are the units the mobile phone are the what these are the units so uh, you can say that units are produced in the cost center all right units are produced in the cost center <laughs> now uh, let's move on now let's move on uh, for the next slide now let's move on for the next slide these are something very basics now uh, absorbing overheads there is a process which is called allocation is a process which, uh, which is called allocation allocation means uh, see some overheads are departmentally specific some overheads are common for instance for example rent there are three cost centers in your factory there are three rooms in your factory your factory is divided into three rooms only for example and you are paying rent you are paying rent 
dollar five hundred thousand for all the three cost centers. Now that rent is something which is not being specifically incurred for that particular cost center. It is for the entire factory. All right. But what allocation means? Allocation means allocation means charging. Charging, or you can say simply noting. The overheads for the specific cost center, for the specific cost center, for the specific cost center. This is something allocation. Now, what do you mean by the term apportionment? Uh, see, uh, uh, we are not going to discuss the calculation of this thing because at paper M A level, the calculation are being examined mostly from overhead absorption rate from this area. You, you people might be remembering overhead absorbed, under absorbed, over absorbed, absorption and marginal costing, profit reconciliations. That is the most examinable content at paper MA level, according to the based on the feedback of the many of the students which they had faced the question in the exam in, in the examination. But you should have a theoretical understanding of at least these points. Okay, so uh, that is why the calculations are not included based on the limited time period. Okay, now what is the apportionment? Apportionment means what? Apportionment means that apportionment means that you are sharing the overheads, which is common overheads among all the cost centers. For example, there is a rent. For example, there is a rent, and you are paying rent for the entire three cost centers, as I have said it earlier. So the rent will be shared, the rent will be divided into three cost centers, not on the equal basis, based on the floor area which they are occupying so uh, this process is known as the apportionment what do you mean by the term apportionment that means that means sharing of overheads i should use the word common overheads sharing of common overheads among all the cost centers sharing of common overheads among all the cost centers that is on the fair basis i mean to say fair basis means fair basis means that the cost will not be divided equally that is according to the uh, logical basis for example for example example you can say that if there is a rent then the rent will be shared on fair basis according to the floor area according to the floor area which they are occupying fine now there is a reapportionment now what is reapportionment reapportionment is something reapportionment is something that uh, see there are for example there are two cost centers this is production center one this is production center one this is production center two and this is my service center this is my service center like canteen like a store for example this is hundred thousand allocated and apportioned allocated and apportioned this is two hundred thousand allocated and apportioned for example and this is only fifty thousand now this 50,000 is a service cost center uh, because service center is not being service center is not involved in the production. Okay, they are providing services to the production center. Now this 50,000 will be shared. This 50,000 will be shared among all the cost center. This will be the balance will be nil. The balance will be nil and these dollar 50,000 will be shared on production center one and production center two this is the reapportionment reapportionment means that sharing of sharing of overheads of service centers to production centers the webinar is not uh, uh, the webinar does not include the questions of on these topics on these areas but we have to solve the uh, this absorption i am giving you one minute 
uh, to note it down if you if any one of you had uh, not noted that note it please then we will be starting the uh, absorption which is the pure examining uh, perspective at ma level students that you people had noted that thing and now what are the what are the stages i am again repeating that is the allocation apportion reapportion and that is the absorption now absorption means absorption means adding adding means absorbing adding uh, absorbing overheads in per unit cost in per unit cost uh, the term the term absorption means the term absorption means that the term absorption means that adding overheads in the per unit cost adding overheads in the per unit cost all right now uh, this is the stage which we are going to discuss uh, in the next slide that is overhead absorption rate now overhead absorption rate is basically number fourth step that is absorption this is number fourth step that is absorption okay now listen it very carefully listen it very carefully this is overhead absorption rate the above uh, is the abbreviation overhead absorption rate and this is my budgeted overheads and budgeted activity level this is my budgeted overheads now what are these budgeted overheads these are something allocated plus apportioned plus reapportioned. These are all allocated, apportioned, and reapportioned. These are budgeted overheads and these are budgeted activity level. If you people remember from uh, the day one of the webinar, no, on the day two of the webinar, which we in which we had discussed fixed overheads. Uh, expenditure and volume variances I had already taught about this uh, overhead absorption rate now for example for example overhead absorption rate overhead absorption rate the activity level usually the time the activity level may be number of units it may be number of units produced or uh, usually or mostly it is time because based on the time the overheads are being incurred and the time is higher off the time is higher off either labor hours or the machine hours because overheads is a volume based costing and it see the volume of the activity it see the volume of the activity so for example for example the budgeted overheads are for example the budgeted overheads are uh, let's say 875000 it is 875000 and that uh, budgeted and that budgeted uh, labor hours for example <clears throat> for uh, example it is 
budgeted labor hours and these are 500 hours and this is budgeted machine hours which is 100,000 okay now see now see your production depends on labor hours and machine hours both your production depends on machine and labor hours both but in this specific example your production is being heavily dependent or uh, is heavily dependent on the labor hours so you will be uh, you will be terming this thing as the production is labor intensive the production is what labor intensive your production is labor intensive labor intensive that means heavily depends on labor so you will be you will be dividing so you will be dividing your overheads that is dollar eight seventy five thousand divided by five hundred thousand eight seventy five divided by five hundred that is dollar one point seven five one point seven five this is per hour one point seven five per hour and you will be saying that this is the estimated rate okay this is not something actual this is something estimated which you are going to estimate at the start of the period at the start of the month at the start of the quarter or whatever is your time period so uh, what is overhead absorption rate what is overhead absorption rate you uh, you will be saying that when labor will work when labor will work one hour comma estimated overheads dollar 1.75 dollar 1.75 uh, when this uh, when this particular overheads will be uh, will be incurred sorry uh, when the uh, when the labor when the labor will work one hour when the labor will work one hour the estimated overheads are likely to be 1.75 and these are all my estimations see i am highlighting it with star these are all estimated figures when labor will work one hour when labor will work one hour the estimated overheads are dollar 1.75 uh, this is uh, overheads absorption rate rate is something which is on per unit for every hour there is 1.75 overheads for every hour there is 1.75 overheads for every hour there is 1.75 overheads okay so uh, let's now uh, let's now uh, move on to the question let's now move on to the question after just 20 seconds <clears throat> <clears throat> okay uh, let's now uh, let's now move on to the uh, to the question let's now move on to the question uh, first of all we should read the requirement which is at the last of the question what is the overheads to be added in the per unit cost what is the overheads to be added in the per unit cost what is the overheads which should be added in the per unit cost first of all read the question at your own pace
okay uh, let's now uh, let's now read the question students this is a very simple example this is a very simple question and the question is that budgeted overheads amounted 150000 budgeted overheads amounted 150000 and budgeted labor hours 60000 and machine hours 20000 20, 20, obviously we will not be including this thing because uh, we take the volume of activity volume of activity which is higher higher volume of activity all right then it is saying to make one unit product alpha it needs five labor arts and two machine arts what amount of overhead should be included in the per unit cost obviously you will be calculating overhead absorption rate that is dollar one fifty thousand divided by sixty thousand hours one fifty upon sixty thousand hours and that is dollar two point five what is this 2.5 this is something per hour this is overhead which is on per hour that means when labor will work one hour when labor will work one hour it is estimated that overheads will be dollar 2.5 and see to make one unit and see to make one unit to make one unit it requires five direct labor hours okay it needs five direct labor hours so for every hour for every one hour of labor working you have attached the overhead to so the uh, you have attached the overheads you have connected the overheads with the labor time and that means that that means that one hour 2.5 overheads 2 hour 2.5 overheads 3 hour 4 hour 5 hours and the product which you are holding in your hand that is the pen for example that is being made in five labor hours so overheads per unit this is dollar 2.5 multiply by 5 5 hours so 2.5 multiply by 5 would become dollar 12.5 so dollar 12.5 is my answer this is my answer and what was the uh, and what was the per unit cost whatever the direct material cost whatever the direct labor cost whatever the direct expense cost whatever the cost it is but overheads amounted dollar 12.5 so now that will be the total cost now that is the mechanism of calculating the overheads uh, that is the mechanism of calculating the overheads uh, on per unit now uh, the very important thing which i'm going to discuss after 10 seconds just because it is not uh, something complex to note it down hurry up i'm just giving you people 10 seconds okay let's now move on to the next slide and the next slide is uh, overhead absorbed actual overheads over under absorbs <clears throat> okay now uh, what is overhead absorb c now this is something uh, which is frequently examined which is frequently examined uh, at ma level uh, in the in the section a kind of in the section a kind of questions all right now what is overheads absorbed overheads absorbed listen it very carefully overheads absorbs is something which is at the start of the period which is something at the start of the period
period something at the start of the period now what does it mean what does it mean that means while you were estimating the cost while you were see the estimations are always at the start of the period this is a very common thing you had estimated that at the start of the period you had estimated that your overheads amounted 10 per unit 20 per unit or whatever whatever this is something overheads which you had estimated at the start of the period and and it is charged in cogs and it is charged in cogs all right now uh, what is actual overheads see what is actual overheads actual overheads is something which will be actual overheads is something which will be which will be uh, which will be the uh, which will be noticed or you can say which will be reported at the end of period it is at the end of the period and obviously there is a difference uh, there is a difference in your estimation and and the real overheads the overheads cannot be similar the overheads cannot be same that you had estimated and what were what was in an actual okay so there is something overhead over absorbed and this is something under absorbed under absorbed and over absorbed over absorbed means that over absorbed means that when estimated overheads are higher when estimated overheads are higher and actual is low and actual overheads is low your estimated overheads are higher and actual overhead is low and under observe uh, we will be we will be further uh, understanding this with an exa with examples with the questions in the next slides and this is vice versa when your estimated overheads low and actual overheads high and actual overheads are higher that means you had charged less you had you had charged less at the start of the period it is the difference of this thing is a difference of start and the end this is the thing okay now see this thing uh, hurry up note this statement and quickly when over, when estimated overheads are higher and actual overhead is low and uh, under absorb means estimated overheads are low and actual overheads are higher hurry up quickly quickly note it down <clears throat> now let's move on to the question uh, this is a question calculate calculate over or under absorbed overheads hurry up uh, i am reading the question you just focus on my words and the and your screen as well the company had estimated the overheads the company had estimated the overheads amounted it is seven per unit and it actually produced 2500 units and actual overheads were 16000 now what do you mean by the term overheads absorbed overhead absorbed c overhead ab absorbed overhead absorbed that means absorbed at the start of the period absorbed at start it is on actual units it is on actual units for example for example at the start of the period you had estimated this rate this is the estimated rate this is the estimated rate and it is your plan it is your plan to uh, to produce uh, sorry you had actually produced 2500 units you had actually produced 2500 units that means your overheads absorbed your overheads absorbed are your overheads absorbed are this is oar multiplied by actual production this will always be the actual production now what is overhead absorption rate 7 multiplied by 2500 
what does it mean that means uh, now this is the time when i had not received the actual overheads 7 multiplied by 2500 results in dollar 17500 now that was already charged in the cogs that was charged in cogs and this is something which is estimated this is something what which is estimated now when the period ends now when the period ends actual overheads resulted actual overheads resulted dollar 16000 so what was the amount which you had already charged in the cogs what was the amount which you had already charged in cogs see it is written charge in cogs that is dollar 16000 dollar uh, sorry dollar 17500 dollar 17500 is the amount which you had charged in the cogs based on your estimations but when actual results came it is 16000 see estimated higher and actual lower that means you had already charged higher in cogs that means you had already charged higher in cogs the amount is 1500 and that is the over absorbed that is what over absorbed wait a minute that is the over absorbed now what does it mean over absorbed over absorbed is something over absorbed is something that you had charged more in the cogs you had charged more in the cogs based on your estimations now uh, answer me students what shall i do what shall i do for this 15 1500 shall i uh, deduct it from cogs or not just answer me there is already the large balance in cogs shall i need to uh, deduct it from cogs say yes or no only yes because in the overheads there is a because in the overheads because sorry in the cogs there was a large balance of 1500 now see this thing see this thing very carefully this 1500 this will now be deducted from cogs this is now deducted from cogs at end of the period so when cost will be low when cost will be low resulting in profit to be high that means over absorbed will increase your profit over absorbed will increase your profit and profit when the profit is increased it is recorded on the credit side so the entry would become income statement credit 1500 and overheads account debit 1500 this is the entry to record overhead absorbed over absorbed overheads so over absorbed overheads now the question usually asked what is the double entry how will you account for the over absorbed sir over absorbed will over absorbed will be the result of estimations higher and low actual overheads cost and then you are supposed to adjust it when you will deduct it from cogs naturally your cost will be low and your profit will be high and this is the entry to record over absorbed overheads all right because the profit is when you when the profit increases you record on the credit side so overhead account debit and income statement credit that is the double entry to record overhead over absorbed over absorbed all right this is a very important thing over absorbed overheads i am just waiting for exactly 20 seconds for you people to copy if anything you left five seconds to go now uh, this was something which is uh, over absorbed overheads now let's move on to the next slide and the next slide is saying calculate calculate over under absorbed overheads all right over under absorbed overheads so let's now uh, start reading the question the company had estimated the overheads amounted dollar four per hour uh, and the actual hours 3900 and actual overheads 16700 now see there is no units now the overheads are being absorbed on labor hours because we do not have units so how will you be accounting for 
which is overheads absorbed what is the rate the rate is 4 per hour multiply what is the actual hours 3900 3900 hours is your actual so what was the amount of the what was the amount of the overhead absorbed that is 15600 and you had noticed the actual overheads you had noticed the actual overheads that was 16700 now see you had estimated uh, this is something this is something charged in cogs at start and this is resulting at n now in cogs you had charged less there is a less balance in cogs as compared with the actual so this is known as the under absorbed overheads this is known as under absorbed overheads 15600 minus 16700 it is 1100 negative under absorbed so uh, what should be uh, done with the under absorbed so we should because in cogs there is a, a low balance written at the start of the period and now we are making the adjustment at the end so we should now add dollar 1100 in the cogs as an adjustment so as a result my cost would increase and my profit will decrease so the double entry to record this under absorbed overheads because the profit when the profit is redu uh, reduced that means loss and the entry would be income statement debit by 1100 and overheads account credit by 1100 overheads account credit by 1100 now that is the double entry as well which i had uh, already written here uh, just note it down in uh, what is the double entry to record under absorbed overheads income statement debit overheads account credit and what is the entry to record over absorbed overheads that was written in the last slide <clears throat> okay uh, now let's move on to the next slide this is absorption costing and marginal costing and uh, absorption and marginal costing see uh, what is absorption costing what is marginal costing i'm now going to differentiate it first of all just note the key points of the absorption costing okay uh, what is absorption costing absorption costing in absorption costing the per unit the per unit cost includes all the production cost all the production cost that is direct material direct labor direct expense variable overheads as well as fixed overheads for example i am writing i am writing random figures i am writing random figures that is dollar 10 dollar 10 dollar 10 and dollar 5 for example this is dollar 35 per unit this is according to the absorption costing but according to the marginal costing according to the marginal costing the per unit cost the per unit cost is the variable cost is the variable cost is a variable cost now what marginal costing is assuming i will be writing something in the next slide so here it is only the variable cost direct material direct labor direct expense and the variable overheads this is 10 this is 10 uh, okay uh, i uh, i ignore direct expense forget direct expense uh, here also ignore the direct expense because uh, because of the calculation okay uh, it is uh, there's a 
variable overheads it is dollar 10 so it would become dollar 30 per unit now see there is a difference of the the difference the difference is due to fix overheads now why there is a fixed overhead difference i'm going to explain it in the next slide because marginal costing is saying that marginal costing is saying that for every at one additional unit for every one additional unit for every one additional unit there is additional variable cost and fixed cost is same regardless of the production and fixed cost is same regardless of the production i'm writing here something that fixed cost is same regardless of the production and marginal costing is not th that is the that is the main reason that is something written in the box that is the main reason that marginal costing is not adding the fixed overheads in the per unit cost marginal costing is saying that whatever the per unit cost whatever the per unit cost is whatever the per unit cost and whatever the number of the production the fixed cost will be the same for the particular period no need to charge in the per unit cost because when you will produce something it, it will be partially sold and some units will be remaining in the closing stock and that will be transferred in the next month so the fixed cost will also be transferring in the next month now see the uh, technicality of this uh, see the technicality of this points to remember points to remember this is a very important slide this is a very important slide <clears throat> for example for example for example you had produced 1000 units you had produced how many units 1000 units and you had sold 800 units and in closing you are having 200 units all right you are having this 200 units <laughs> I'm taking the uh, I'm taking the I'm taking these figures okay I'm taking these figures in absorption costing the stock is 35 in marginal costing the stock is at dollar 30 now see in absorption costing and in marginal costing in marginal costing in absorption costing the fixed overheads are dollar five in marginal costing the fixed overheads are dollar zero see the last example now what will be happening if i will be using marginal cost absorption costing if i will be using absorption costing in this example i will be writing some points over here a theoretical points but if i will be using absorption if i will be using absorption then then fixed overheads will be on 800 units because 800 units will be the cost of goods sold cost of goods sold and the fixed overheads will be transferred in next month of 200 units but marginal costing is saying that but marginal costing is saying that no need to charge fixed overheads in the unit cost but marginal costing is saying that but marginal costing is saying that in per unit no fixed cost fixed cost zero treat the whole cost treat the whole cost in the period in the current period no transfer to the next period no transfer to the next period okay but in absorption costing it is included in this per unit cost it is included in per unit cost now this is a month number one 
this is uh, and this is the month number one in which I had sold 800 units and naturally the fixed cost is the part of the production cost Marginal costing does is not making the part of the production cost marginal costing is saying treat is a monthly cost the entire cost no need to transfer to the next period so uh, what are the key points to remember is that key points to remember is that uh, I am going to write with blue color just uh, note it down marginal uh, key points to remember is that absorption costing makes fixed cost as the part of the production as a part of the production as a part of the production the fixed cost on closing units will be transferred to next period will be transferred to next period marginal costing does not include fixed cost in the marginal costing does not include a fixed cost in the unit cost marginal costing does not include the fixed cost in the unit cost it treats the whole fixed cost as the periodic cost periodic cost means the entire cost to be charged in the particular period no transfer to the next period no transferring to the next period the entire cost should be included in the periodic cost now marginal costing is saying whatever the cost is incurred regardless of the production you should make it the uh, you should make it the part of the period cost okay Uh, Mr. Vakar, I am addressing your question that uh, Mushin Siddiqui, the slides will be shared in the WhatsApp group. Don't you worry about the uh, slide. I will be sharing that thing. And Vakar, your question was that why non-manufacturing overheads are is variable non-manufacturing. Uh, it, it, it is not something uh, manufacturing. Non-manufacturing is something which is the which is not related to the production. We are talking about the production. It is not added in the per unit cost in the marginal costing. Now, uh, students, I'm now going to for the next slide. I am now going for the uh, next slide within just few seconds. And this is my next slide. Uh, now, there is a profit difference under absorption and marginal costing. Obviously, there is a difference under absorption and marginal costing. Uh, the profit is is because of profit is because of a fixed cost and the number of units. I am now going to I am now going to uh, write a very simple trick uh, because at the last moment when you are going to prepare for the exam just remember this trick and you will be able to calculate that uh, you, will, you will be able to calculate all the questions of this absorption and marginal profit reconciliations okay just remember this formula and uh, there is something fixed overheads and number of units now you should have fixed OAR per unit is equal to marginal profit minus absorption profit divided by opening stock minus closing stock okay you will be able, able to calculate the marginal and absorption costing and remember one thing point to note is that note is that opening and closing stock when stock increases when stock level increases profit from absorption increases okay 
नंबर टू इज दैट वेन स्टॉक लेवल डिक्रीजेस profit from marginal increases now this is the thing to note this can be asked in a theoretical statement hurry up note it or capture it i am waiting just for 20 seconds note or capture whatever you want just 20 seconds from now All right. Now let's uh, move on to the question. Calculate the profit under marginal costing. Now a uh, focus that I I am reading. Uh, just focus on the question as well. Orange Limited is operating absorption costing and its reported profit under current system amounted eighty thousand nine hundred. Eighty thousand nine hundred is the profit from absorption costing, and we are required to uh, calculate profit under marginal. Okay. a uh, fixed oer 1.5 per labor hour and it needs three labor hours now first of all we need to have overhead absorption rate per unit it's 1.5 hurry up students solve the question simultaneously along with me because of shortage of time uh, it's not possible to give you more time 1.5 multiplied by 3 that is dollar 4.5 per unit okay now see opening production and sold you had opening stock 200 you had produced 1600 that means you are total having 1800 and you had sold 1450 that means your closing stock is 200 plus 1600 is 1800 minus 1450 which you had sold and the remaining is 350 units now see this is the opening and this is the closing you should say that stock level is increasing stock level is increasing by your stock level is increasing by 150 units so my answer would be absorption profit high absorption profit high and marginal profit is low now apply that trick um, the last formula this is the formula i am not going to redraw the formula i am just now going to put up the figures now that is overhead absorption rate which is 4.5 is equal to marginal costing profit is unknown to me x minus absorption costing is 80900 opening stock 200 minus closing stock 350 now use your mathematical tricks but i know one thing my answer will be lower Then eighty thousand nine hundred because absorption profit uh, should be higher. So this this is now four point five is equal to x minus eighty thousand nine hundred, and this is something minus one fifty. When it will when it will go over there, that will become minus six seventy five is equal to x minus eighty thousand nine hundred. Now x will go over there. 675 plus 80900 is equal to x now my uh, answer is 80225 is equal to x that is the marginal profit apply this trick in your in your cal in, in your questions either uh, in your regular class worksheets or in your official exam kits i'm damn sure that you people will be able to now solve this profit reconciliation uh, if it is given marginal costing you can calculate absorption and vice versa just waiting for 15 seconds capture it now uh, this is the next uh, the next slide i am going to uh, the profit under absorption costing the profit under absorption costing now see fixed overheads is 6 per unit it is per unit no need to uh, calculate that 
uh, just calculate the opening how many units opening 100 how many units uh, produce 1100 that means how many units you are having you are having 1200 and how many units you had sold 1120 1120 you had sold now uh, we have 80 units in the closing now this is opening this is closing and your stock level is decreasing your stock level is decreasing by 20 okay so that means marginal profit should be higher than the absorption so uh, this is the profit under marginal costing 99900 and we are required to calculate from absorption now i'm uh, simply uh, placing the form uh, placing the figures in the formula dollar 6 per unit and that is marginal costing profit minus x absorption is unknown opening 100 minus closing 80 so that will be 6 is equal to 99900 minus x upon 20 it will go over there that is dollar 120 is equal to 99900 minus x now it's 120 minus 99,900 is equal to minus X. That is minus 99,780 is equal to minus X. Minus minus will be cancelled. And that means your X, which is your absorption. absorption profit is dollar ninety nine thousand seven eighty all right so see uh, the marginal costing profit is higher now the marginal profit because the stock level is decreasing so marginal profit is higher and this is the marginal profit higher and absorption profit lower <coughs> okay let's now move on for the uh, process costing uh, now what is process costing it involves the costing of series of processes series of processes uh, now you pe uh, you people um, might have studied that uh, there are series of different processes now what for example uh, petroleum for example pat uh, uh, i should write it completely for example there is a oil refinery there is a oil refinery okay now uh, there may be a chemical industry chemical industry now what is the process costing here that your product is made product is made using different series of processes that is for example p1 then process 2 then for example process 3 the resulting are the finished goods the resulting are the what finished goods this is your uh, process costing the serial of steps and what is the basic purpose of process costing to have cost record for every process and what is the cost at here what is the cost here what is the cost here we should have the we should have the uh, record for each and every process because we are doing the costing we are doing the costing for every process so that is the process costing now one thing there is a closing wip and equivalent units concept closing wip and e equivalent units concept this is a very important concept why i have uh, chosen this concept because of the uh, regular examining uh, content at ma level okay uh, you people may receive may be receiving two three questions on process costing based on the past experience of the students and based on the feedbacks so you may be receiving uh, the
process costing calculation which involves work in progress and equivalent units now assuming no loss assuming what no loss there may be loss but there is no loss in our in our course it is written in your official textbooks that there is no loss in the work in progress and equivalent units assume imagine that this is my process one this is my process one and i had inserted my resources for 1000 units i had inserted my resources for 1000 units out of which 700 units are 100 percent finished 700 units are 100 percent finished and 300 units are still in wip that the work is not completed yet they are in progress you people might be noticing or observing in your uh, in your streets roads whenever the construction is going on it is written the work is in progress that means the 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 complete road is not made you can say this is the meters this is the roads thousand meter roads we have selected to repair and 700 meters of the road had been completed and on 300 meters the work is still in progress and when i asked to that person that what is the status they had told me that sir it is 80 percent done it is 80 percent done and 20 percent will be done in the next month in the next process for example so see equivalent units are the units these are the units that shows the partial work partial incomplete work or you can say the work which is completed to date now see how many units you had already produced 100 percent that is finished goods 700 finished goods 700 and and 700 goods are still in progress but that are 80 percent done so 300 multiplied by 80 percent that is 240 700 plus 240 that is 940 this is known as equivalent units Strength just uh, uh, copy it down. This is the this is the equivalent unit. Just note it down. Hurry up. These are equivalent units. You are supposed to note it down. I'm giving you a few seconds for that.
okay uh, i am now assuming that you people had uh, noted it down now let's move on to the uh, now let's move on to the uh, next slide <clears throat> now uh, let's move on to the next slide and this is a steps of process costing these are the steps of process costing this is equivalent units first of all number two you need to calculate cost per equivalent unit number three valuations and number four the process t account number three uh, number four is the process t account number one is the uh, equivalent unit number two cost per equivalent units number three valuations and number four and number four the process t account okay so uh, remember these point uh, these steps now uh, this is the question this is the question and i'm going to read it uh, the question is saying that complete the process t account complete the process t account complete the process account complete the process account process limited had input 2000 liters <clears throat> process limited had input 2000 liters in a process to produce the product gamma closing wip is 300 units which are 80 percent complete the whole process cost now the whole process cost includes direct material direct labor production overheads and all the cost amounted 10 6 7 0 for the period 10 6 7 0 for the period now we have to uh, follow all these four steps we have to follow all these uh, four steps number one is calculate equivalent units number one we have to calculate the equivalent units uh, number one equivalent units and that is what is the finished goods what are the finished goods that is c 200 uh, 2000 liters are input and 300 are in wip that means for sure 1700s are the finished goods okay uh, so it is 1700 plus closing wip that is 300 multiplied by 80 person a are 24 that's 240 and 1700 plus 240 would become 1940 that is your equivalent units okay now next number two number two we need to have a cost per unit we need to have cost per unit 10 670 upon 1940 10 670 upon 1940 that is dollar 5.5 per unit that is cost per unit okay uh, number three we have to calculate for the valuations and number four the process account now the valuation will be of the finished goods and wip uh, what is the finished goods value 1700 multiplied by 5.5 1700 multiplied by 5.5 that is 9350 and wip that is 240 wip that is uh, 240 240 is the wip 240 multiplied by 5.5 that is 1320 okay so uh, you will now be uh, you will now have to prepare the process t account this is my process ledger this is my process ledger and here i will be writing dollars and here units dollar and units now this is input 
input that is 2000 and you have to insert the cost as well okay uh, I, sh I think I should uh, redraft it for better visibility with different colors this is my T account okay and here it is dollars here it is units here again units and dollars so input is 2000 and the cost is 10670 here it is fg finished goods 1700 and that is the value is 9350 but remember one thing how many units are in closing wip that is not 240 in closing wip there are 300 units i will be writing here closing wip 300 units and the value will be 1320 and the value will be 1320 now your process t account would be balanced you people can check it this is a process t account this is a process t account and your process account is now balanced and in the closing wip you will be you will be writing the entire 300 units you will be writing the entire 300 units but the value will be of 240 units Now let's move on to the now let's move on to the next slide and uh, it is different stages of closing WIP now what are different stages first of all see this is written conversion cost uh, I should first explain the conversion cost conversion cost is something that your material is converted into finished goods material is converted into finished goods now which uh, which resource is being converted into the finished goods the material now when the material cost will be converted when the material cost will be converted when you will be uh, charging direct labor plus production overheads so this is the conversion cost conversion cost is equal to direct labor plus production overheads okay so conversion cost that is 5280 which is which is written here that includes direct labor as well as the production overheads now let's uh, start understanding this uh, example sorry uh, it is uh, the answer will be split into two slides okay so first of all number one number one we need to prepare the statement of equivalent unit the statement of equivalent units the statement of equivalent units see what is written here input in the process 1000 units finished goods 800 closing wip closing wip with respect to the material is 90 percent done and conversion cost is 80 percent done now the percentage is something that uh, on the closing inventory first of all okay first of all note it down that with respect to material with respect to material with respect to material the finished goods are see 1000 units that means 800 is done and 200 are on wip that is finished goods are 800 units which is done and closing wip with respect to the material 200 is 90 percent done that is a uh, material is being uh, allotted to the uh, closing wip that is 90 percent 200 multiplied by 90 percent that is 180 so that means this is the equivalent units 
for 980 equivalent units 980 with respect to the material now with respect to the uh, conversion cost finished goods are same 800 but closing wip is 80 percent done so 200 multiplied by 80 percent a to the 16 that would become 960 all right now this is the equivalent units with respect to the conversion cost now what you are supposed to do right now in your step number two i am writing step number two here i am writing step number two here this was my step number one step number one now step number two is here we need to calculate cost per unit now we have got two different equivalent units we have got different amounts and we will need to calculate different cost per unit that is with respect to material 2940 upon 980 with respect to conversion cost 5280 upon 960 that was dollar 3 per unit and that is 5280 upon this is 5.5 per unit okay just note it down then i will be uh, using these figures in the next slide because of because there is no space available here i will be proceeding this question in the next slide <clears throat> now uh, in the third step in the third step it is uh, very much important the third step is of the valuations now see valuations for finished goods total value per unit total value per unit that is what 3 and 5.5 that is dollar three plus dollar five point five that is dollar eight point five per unit okay now for the uh, closing wip closing wip calculate separate wip and that total wip will be reported in the process account now this will be my fourth step process account but first of all apply these things here uh, look uh, uh, look at here with the blue color this thing and this thing okay uh, how many units are finished sir 800 now finished goods are 800 multiplied by 5 sorry 8.5 Finished goods are 800, that is 8.5. Yes, it was uh, 800 multiplied by 8.5. The answer is 6800. And number two is the closing WIP. With respect to material, with respect to labor, sorry, with respect to the conversion cost. With respect to material, see this thing. See that thing. 180 and 30 and three, 3 per unit. 160 and 5.5. 5. 180 multiplied by 3. One eighty multiplied by 3. That is 540. And with respect to the conversion cost, 160 multiplied by 5.5. 5. 160 multiplied by 5.5 5. 
160 multiplied by 5.5 that is dollar 880 now these two things will be reported in the process account this is 1420 okay now uh, see how the process cost uh, process t account will be shown that is input was 1000 units input was 1000 units 2940 and 5280 are the input cost direct material and conversion cost that was 2940 and 5280 you can make it total it will be balanced and what is the value of finished goods that is 800 at 6800 and WIP closing 200 that value 1420 your answer would be balanced you can check it out this figures these figures will be balanced Uh, Hassan Gauri, that FIFO and FCO which you had asked, it is not under uh, uh, closing WIP. It is in the opening WIP. It is for the opening WIP. Okay, now students, now I'm going for the next slide. And the next slide is about the forecasting and the data techniques. And the data analysis techniques okay so uh, this is the this is the data analysis uh, now put up the heading of the data analysis what do you mean by the term data analysis analyzing means analysis of the past analysis of the past data analysis means analyze of the past data analyze of the past data now it can be any data it can be any data whether it is financial whether it is non-financial whether it is financial or whether it is non-financial analysis of the past data financial and the non-financial okay Financial is something like you can say it is in the monetary figures and Non-financial is something you know what non-financial we had already discussed the qualitative aspect the number of complaints and all that stuff Now there is a, a Recently added topic which is the big data in your syllabus big data. What is uh, big data? Look big data is something big data is something big data is something which has following three basic v's following three basic v's now you might be confusing what is uh, three v's that means number one number one is the volume number one is the volume number two is the variety and number three is the velocity number three is the velocity now what is volume 
volume is something that refers the quantity of the data that refers the quantity of the data i am giving you live examples the real life examples and you people are already aware of those organizations you people are already aware of those organizations do you people use facebook obviously yes 99% of the student would be using facebook you might have seen the advertisement of this practice to pass webinar on the facebook you people are using google you people are using a uh, different kind of search engines the instagram these all are the organizations having the big data because of the quantity of the data people from pakistan from uk from uae from india bangladesh usa there are so many different countries and all are using that one particular platform and that organizations are having that data at large quantity at bulk of the quantity now uh, next example emirates airline pegasus airline turkish airline etihad airline pia pakistan international airline there are so many passengers who had traveled in the past and that airline company has the data of many of the passengers both locally and internationally this is what volume now when it comes to the social media when it comes to the social media on the internet the volume of data is measured through megabyte through gigabyte through petabyte through exabyte through yottabyte yes you people are not aware of the yottabyte exabyte and all when 1024 mb it becomes 1 gb 1 gigabyte when 10 when 1024 gb it calls 1 tb 1 terabyte when 1024 TB is called one petabyte, then exabyte, yottabyte, zettabyte, there are a lot of bytes. And obviously, at home, at the personal capacity, we have hardly the data in terms of gigabytes, GB, 30 GB, 20 GB hard drive, etc. Now, what is the basically the volume? Volume is something that is refers the bulk quantity of data. That is the quantity of data that is the quantity of data now what is the variety variety is something that you have got different varieties now how we will be differentiating different varieties different varieties like like financial like non-financial like pictures videos texts like your phone numbers like your nic cnic national identity card number like your blood group your passport number imagine there is a hospital there is a very big hospital in your area it's a very big hospital and there are a lot of patients and the hospital is um, uh, near about a 20 years old hospital and they've got different kinds of data uh, just see the one example there's a facebook in the facebook you are having pictures people upload the pictures there are videos there are text feeling happy with 29 others and people use their uh, telephone number blood group in in the hospital depending on the nature of the uh, organization they are they are storing their data and there is the velocity what is the velocity velocity is something that is a speed of creating speed creating and updating the data a speed of creating and updating the data a speed a speed i am giving you one simple example to understand the velocity that is um, it is it is the past um, it is the past data which i had searched it from the google that there are 500 tweets in a twitter there are 500 tweets in one day you might be confusing 500 no it is 500 million tweets in one day everybody nowadays are using twitter but i am not but i don't use it me harrison if there are a lot of people using twitter 500 million tweets in one day 
across the world approximately it is not the confirmation and this was the uh, approximately last year analysis which i am going to uh, which i am explaining here <clears throat> obviously in today 2021 this figure might have exceeded 580 million tweets per day and this is what the speed of creating and updating the data now this is uh, these when these v's are uh, at least these three basic v's are met the data is known as the big data volume variety and the velocity volume variety and the velocity and nowadays every organization has got uh, some kind of a big data but when you compare one organization with another organization the big and the small data can be differentiated based on the volume variety and the velocity okay uh, for example the data of the students acca organization uh, uh, ACCA is the leading one of the leading organization across the world in the accountancy profession which is operating in more than 191 190 countries and see there are a lot of data of the students from 190 countries 100,000 and lakhs of uh, there are many ACCA members many ACCA students many affiliates ACCA has got volume of data the variety the variety the variety according to the acc point of view that how many students have uh, been complete have completed their acc journey how many students are conducting taking the webinar how many students have passed their skills module whatever there's a variety of that data their telephone number their birth their date of birth their passport number their number of attempts they had attempted the paper the velocity the speed obviously the speed of the speed of acc students is increasing it was a very past analysis that after every eight minute or uh, after every eight hours, I forgot that uh, rate, one student enrolls in ACCA. Now it is uh, the fasting thing. ACCA is the leading organization. Many of the students are entering into the accountancy qualification and pursuing ACCA. Now that is the speed. That is the speed of the data. Now one thing note, point to be noted is that there is one other V this is veracity and veracity is the reliable source of data the data should come from the reliable source okay so data analysis that means you are you are, you are supposed to analyze your past data both financial and the non-financial the big data which i had explained volume variety velocity this is another veracity there's the reliable source of data now how big data is used and why how big data is used and why how big data is used and why the answer is how will you use your big data how will you use your big data and why do you use your big data why why you are using the big data why you are using the big data why you are using the big data so as a organization for example i am running an airline business i we have got airline business we are airline business and uh, we have got um, traveling pattern of the passengers we have got the traveling pattern of the passengers so that we are uh, so that we can quote the uh, ticket price now see after two three months that you the tourism season will be at its peak if covid 19 allows now airline business will analyze the past pattern the past pattern now how and why big data are used for research and development for uh, production processes for production processes improvements why i'm using the big data okay how will you use the big data through data analysis to different techniques and why will you be using the big data for research and development production process improvement to understand the pattern to understand the past pattern and quoting selling price for future to understand the customer needs To understand the customer needs and simply for planning 
controlling and the decision making planning controlling and the decision making this is why you are using the big data why you are using the big data big data okay it depends on the nature of the organization which is uh, which you are operating okay observe the last year 2020 the covid 19 the covid 19 situation many approximately all the businesses were shifted to the online and then now the online platforms like go to webinar and other online platforms have now got the variety the volume and the velocity of the data and they are now using the data to predict the future pattern that how and why the people are, will be switching towards the online meetings so that they can uh, schedule their uh, their servers okay so that was the big data analysis now there is uh, another thing which is the coefficient of correlation now uh, students please focus here coefficient of correlation coefficient of correlation see coefficient of correlation coefficient of correlation this is a forecasting technique and uh, coefficient of correlation basically coefficient of correlation basically it measures it measures the relation it measures the relationship between between two variables it measures the relationship between two variables one variable is x and one is y one variable is x and one is y what is x x is something which is independent and y is something which depends on x which depends on x for example for example x is my summer season when the summer season when the weather will be hot then in response then in response why is ice cream sales obviously when the when the weather will be hot then the ice cream sales will be increasing now so x is the independent variable y depends on the x now in order to understand the intensity of the relationship between these two variables there is a measurement which is known as the coefficient of correlation and now i am going to write the formula of coefficient of correlation it is shown by a small r hurry up students uh, this is n and this is summation of x y minus summation of x summation of y upon under root n multiply by summation of x square minus summation of x whole square the bracket is closed and then n multiply by summation of y square minus summation of y the whole square now this is the uh, something i advise all of you people to memorize the formula but it will be available in the uh, in the in the exam in the exam so what is the coefficient of correlation if your answer if your answer is if your answer is if your answer is your answer should be your answer should be between these range minus one zero and plus one if your answer If your answer is in this range, if your answer is in this range, that is negative correlation. If your answer is in this range, that is positive correlation. Now, what do you mean by the term positive and the negative correlation? Positive correlation means 
positive correlation means if x increase y increase negative correlation means x increase y decreases for example the uh, uh, the weather season is hot the weather is hot ice cream sale will be increasing but the demand for the jackets and the sweaters will be will be declining so there is the inverse you can say positive and negative means direct relation and this is inverse relation this is direct and inverse okay this is direct and inverse uh, i hope you people have noted this formula or i advise you just to capture it because uh, right now uh, right now i will be uh, solving the question in a quick manner because of the mathematical calculation you people can even apply this calculations but i need to uh, explain you people the tricks i need to explain you people the tricks okay so next slide here see the question see the question and i will be uh writing the solution here this is my month month number one okay uh, i i should explain what does n indicates n indicates number of pairs number of pairs of data what is this n n means number of pairs of data number of pairs of data okay this is my uh, pair number one pair number two pair number three pair number four that means n is four see uh, what is the x here this is x and this is y temperature degrees and ice cream units now i have to draw now i have to draw the columns i have to draw the columns n is four i have to draw the columns first of all x then y then x y then x square then y square okay one two three four hurry up students just i'm writing just x x is 10 18 20 and 28 now this is known as summation of x 10 18 20 and 28 this is 76 now what is y y is 29 36 40 and 48 what is summation of y 153 now what is x y you have to multiply x and y individually 20 it is now 290 i am uh, writing the uh, correct figures i advise all of you just to capture or note it down in a quick manner because uh, i will be a little bit fast because uh, because the concept has been clear and the calculation is necessary to uh, to show 290 it is 648 it is 800 and it is 1344 now this is known as summation of xy now the total figure is 290 648 800 and 1344 that is 3082 and you, and you have to take x square and y square what is x square 100 square Ten, sorry 10 square will become 100 18 square will become 324 20 square and 28 square that's 400 784 and this is known as summation of x square 1608 and then take the y square figure okay take the y square figure 841 1296 1600 and 2304 and the amount is summation of y square that is 6041 now these are the figures which we had calculated using x and y using the calculations of x and y just note down these figures okay 
just note down these figures these are x and the y now uh, there is a there is a relationship between uh, temperature and the ice cream units we all know there is a relationship but what is the intensity what is the intensity what is the level of the relation a strong weak this is the calculation determines based on the past data this is the past analysis so r is equal to what was the formula the formula was that i think i will i should write it again uh, for you people this is uh, n summation of x y minus summation of x summation of y divided by under root that is n multiplied by summation of x square minus summation of x the whole square and then you will be multiplying again n multiplied by summation of y square minus summation of y the whole square okay now put up the figures here uh, i think you people had noted down these figures and i'm just now going to write the figures and n is 4 multiplied by what is summation of xy this is 3084 3082 this is the figure 3082 3082 minus summation of x 76 summation of y 153 divided by under root n is 4 multiplied by what was summation of x square you can see from your uh, noted figure it was 1608 minus summation of x that was 76 the whole square and 4 multiplied by 6041 minus summation of y is 153 the whole square so when you will be solving the resulting figure is 0 0.99 i have already sold i uh, solved this question i have already sold and noted down uh, that is why i am writing in a quick manner now 0 0.99 is something which is partial positive it is something partial positive if your r is plus 1 that is perfect positive if your r is in between 0 and plus 1 that is partial positive if your r is zero that means no relation for example apple and banana they come uh, 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 this is the natural production in every season there is no relationship at all if your answer is minus one that is perfect negative and if your answer is in between minus 1 till 0 it is partial negative all right so uh, this is the coefficient of correlation uh, students just come in the question box and what i have decided right now in my mind that today we are not having any break is it fine because uh, the break will take 15 minutes and we will be covering one topic as well all of you i need i need a quick response from all of you see i am not giving the break that's uh, also for your studies is it fine all of you now that's very good the strong commitment of the students i always appreciate and today is juma as well and we have got juma prayer and it is according to pakistan time uh, the prayer time will be uh, after two as well so uh, so students we are not going to have any break today and i appreciated your commitment by not having the break okay now this is the coefficient of correlation now let's come on to the next slide that is coefficient of determination now see this is something x this is something y x and y and point to be noted is that there is a change in y 
there is a change there is a change in why there is a change in why it's because of x there is a change in y because of x we all know coefficient of determination is basically shown as r square now what is r square shows r square shows that r square shows that percentage change in y because of x assume assume there is x there is y we have solved the r was 0.92 the r was 0.92 now that was showing partial positive correlation okay but when we will be solving r square coefficient of determination coefficient of determination that means r square r square 0.92 would become square that means uh, 0.92 square 0.92 square that is 0.8464 multiplied by 100 that is 84.64 percent you know what does this indicate what does this indicate this shows this shows that there is 84.64 percent change in y because of x and remaining now what was the uh Uh, 84.64 now what was the remaining that is 15 point and remaining 15.36 percent because of other factors because of other factors not because of x because of x the change in y is 84 percent 84.64 percent because of x there's a change in y that is 84 percent only 84.64 percent <clears throat> And rest of the 15.36 percent because of the other factors that that is not the reason x 84 percent change in y obviously there is a change in y that is because of x that is 84 percent and 15 percent is something else some other factors now this the this is the coefficient of determination uh, now let's come to the next slide this is the line of best fit. This is a line of best fit. Line of best fit is that it is a line of best fit is the it is the straight line. I am not drawing any graph, but this is a uh, straight line which is the best fit this is a straight line which is best fit and there is an equation that is y is equal to a plus bx a plus bx there's a line which is a plus bx and uh, this is a straight fit line a uh, straight line of best fit is the linear regression analysis linear regression analysis now what is this a shows the fix x shows the activity b shows the variable portion and y shows the total amount y shows the total amount now there is there are uh, separate formulas for first of all you need to calculate b b is calculated as n and means number of pairs of data summation of x y minus summation of x summation of y divided by and summation of x square minus summation of x the whole square and then you will be calculating a how a will be calculated 
is calculated as summation of y upon n minus b summation of x upon n you need to analyze the past data and you are constructing a pattern and you are constructing a pattern for your future for your future analysis Okay, there is a last slide. Uh, the one who wanted to take the screenshot, you can, Hassan. All right. Now this is the line of best fit, and this is your this is your uh, question. Again, we have got four pairs. N is four, and we have to write. We have to draw the columns x y x y and the x square i am writing it and i have already solved because it is a uh, it is a lengthy calculation it's a time consuming basically it is not difficult as such so first of all take the x that's 20 17 24 and 30. it is summation of x 20 17 24 and 30 that is 91 what is y 80 85 91 and 96 that is summation of y 352 now what is x y write the figures i am just writing the total summation of x y would be 8109 and what is x square i'm just writing the total answer that is summation of x square 2165 either believe me or uh, solve it up to you but i recommend just to take the a screenshot because we are having limited time and i wanted to give a uh, a, a recap a recap of uh, maximum area that is why i'm not even giving the break today because since it is the last day so these are the values which we had calculated and now we are supposed to calculate the b first of all we will be calculating b and what is the uh, question this is the question and we will be calculating b first now what was the formula of b this is the formula of b This is a formula of B, okay? Uh, and this is a formula of A. I'm just putting up the figures. Okay, I am uh, writing the formula again. I'm writing the formula again for B. That is N X Y minus summation of X summation of Y upon N summation of X square minus summation of X the whole square. And how will you be calculating the B? Just uh, uh, remember these figures these figures and b is 4 multiplied by 8109 minus 91 multiplied by 352 upon 4 multiplied by 2165 minus 91 the whole square and b is 1.07 b is 1.07 next we are now going to calculate a and the formula for a was summation of y upon n minus b summation of ex upon n 
now summation of y was 352 upon n4 minus b is 1.07 1.07 multiplied by 91 upon 4 and now the a is 63.66 now y is equal to a plus bx pi is equal to 63.66 plus 1.07 x now you have made this a linear equation and see this is a total production and total cost Remember there was a uh, there was a method hilo method which we had also discussed in the variance class Hilo method only considers two activities the highest and the lowest now This is the line of best fit which consider all the units available all the activities available all the pattern available the detailed analysis and that is the thing now for the future forecasting For future Forecasting Place x is equal to units to be produced in the future for future cost. Okay, and A is 63.66 fixed cost, and B is 1.07, that is variable cost per unit and x is my total units and y is my total cost now the basic thing is that hilo method considers only the highest and the very lowest activity level but uh, this linear regression analysis analyzes all the data which is being available here not skipping any of the activity Okay, let's now move on to the uh, next topic, which is time series analysis. The time series analysis. I am going to give you a recap, a thorough refresher of time series analysis so that you will be able to handle at least the MCQs. Uh, so time series analysis is basically, it is, see what is written, the time series. You have to analyze the past serial time. Is the past what serial time is the past serial time serial time okay the time series and what is the trend the trend is basically the increase or decrease in the demand increase or decrease in the demand normally and what is seasonal variation seasonal variation is basically it is also the fluctuation in demand it is also the fluctuation in demand because of season because of season now because of any season the uh, demand is likely to increase extraordinary for example when the tourism season is uh, uh is at its peak then the demand for the hotels demand for the restaurants are increasing extraordinary it is not the normal increase or decrease in demand the normal increase or decrease in demand with the passage of time is the trend and seasonal variation is something which is the increase or decrease just because of the season not because of the uh, routine thing because of the season so time series analysis basically considers basically considers these two aspects there are other aspects as well but a uh, time series analysis is the technique which analyzes the past serial of time past serial time the data the data in a serial manner the data in the serial manner trend and the seasonal variation now see the thing there are two models additive and multiplicative model in the additive model there is y T S in the multiplicative model it is Y T S 
Now, what is the difference? Is the additive that means plus? Is the multiplicative that means multiply? And what is y? Y is sales units. T is trend. S is seasonal variation. S is seasonal variation. Additive model, which means in a trend, the seasonal variation will be added. In a multiplicative model, the seasonal variation will be multiplied. Now I can convert these two models. I can convert these two models when it is additive. I can make it multiplicative as well. No problem at all. It's just about the calculative, uh, the calculative manner, the calculation manner. You people can notice in the uh, next question. Just read the question at your own pace. Requirement. What are the expected sales in quarter two of year three? Hurry up, uh, read it. Then I will be uh, solving this question here. Read this question at your own capacity. ABC limited has made the trend equation now see uh, when the MCQ will come that trend equation will be given to you The trend in the trend equation. It is a plus sign It is a plus sign In trend equation That means it is the rising trend It is the increasing trend, okay, it is the increasing trend and it was based on the past two years the seasonal variations are these are the seasonal variations now see there is no uh, there is uh, no model name mentioned but this is plus 9 plus 7 minus 11 minus 15 this is the additive model this is the additive model and the indication is that the quarterly seasonal variation should always be zero you people can calculate it 19 plus 7 minus 11 minus 15 that is zero quarterly seasonal variation in additive model note these things these are the theoretical discussion points these are the examinable uh, content quarterly seasonal variation in additive model is zero okay so plus sign indicates that trend uh, trend is the rising trend and the trend was based on the last two years now see what i am writing they had made the past data past data of two years in one year we all know that there are four quarters see quarter one quarter two quarter three quarter four and year two and year three see what they have analyzed quarter one that means one that means two that means three that means four there are four quarters that means five six seven eight they have analyzed the data of two years two years means four and four eight quarters and in the upcoming year we have got quarter number nine 10 11 and 12 and they are asking me for the quarter 2 of year 3 now quarter 2 of year 3 is the 10 figure so y is equal to t plus s so y is equal to t plus s now what is the t equation what is the t equation t is 180 plus 1.2 q s is quarter 2 7 plus 7 that is s 
okay now in q i will be placing the value 10 because it is a 10th quarter so 180 plus 1.2 q in q we are placing 10 and 7 is the seasonal variation now the total answer is 180 plus 1.2 multiplied by 10 that becomes 192 plus 7 that is total 199 units that is the expected or you can say the forecasted the forecasted sales units in quarter 2 of year 3 this is just a forecasting it is not necessarily that this uh, that these number of units will be sold this is my estimation based on the past two years based on the past two years based on the past two years all right so this is the uh, this is the uh, mcq kind of a question which you uh, may be facing in your in your cbe exam Allotting the numbers, it's understood quarter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And it is being asking for quarter 2 for year 3. Just 10 seconds. Now let's move on to the next slide. The next slide is about uh, see the seasonal variations are 1.13, 0.9, 1.1. This is the thing. This is showing the multiplicative model. This is showing the multiplicative model, and in multiplicative model, the total the you you can calculate the total should be equal to four. See, you can add it thing. This should be equal to four. This is the uh, this is equals four. In multiplicative model now this is yet another indication now this is a quarter uh, these are the quarters again is the past two years past two years and we are uh, we are being asked for quarter three for year three quarter one quarter two quarter three and quarter four year one year two year three one two three four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now we have got, we should have 11. That is quarter 3. That's y is equal to t multiplied by s. t 220 plus 1.5 q multiplied by s. That is a quarter 3, 1.1. 220 plus 1.5 q 11. Multiply by 1.1. That is 260.15 units. Forecasted to be sold. In quarter three of year three. Now that is a multiplicative model. The hint is that the total should be equal to 4. And when the total is equal to 4, that is a 0. That is also the theoretical uh, question which can be examined. Now move on to the next slide. These are averages. These are averages. And number one, arithmetic mean. Okay, there, uh, there is a request from a student that uh, you want to take the screenshot of line of best fit. Okay. This is the line of best fit. Take the screenshot of this.
chitalu com have you taken the screenshot uh, of this okay this is the next slide take the screenshot done and this is another slide type yes once you done okay let's now move on to the averages uh, see students what is average what is average average is something average is something uh, for example in day one don't write don't write in day one i sold 10 units in day two i sold 15 units now total day two i sold how many units 10 plus 15 is equal to 25 in two days so on average i sold 12 12.5 units in a day this is the average this is the what this is the average now we uh, usually calculate the averages figure we usually calculate the average figure and this is the arithmetic mean average which i had just calculated there are different averages there are different methods to calculate averages number one is the arithmetic mean what is arithmetic mean it means simple average simple average that you calculate sum of all divided by number of values divided by number of values for example for example day one for example day two for example day three okay there are three values now whatever the data is is it number of units for example number of uh, units number of students in the class for example there are 10 20 and 60 now what is the total what is the total the total is uh, the total is sum of all will be also known as summation of x so 10 plus 20 plus 60 upon how many days are there one two and three this is three so 10 20 plus 60 it is 90 90 upon 3 90 upon 3 which means on average there are three units in a day this is on average what does it mean it is on average on average i had sold 30 units in a day on average now the why the average figure is calculated just listen it verbally average figure you calculate in order to predict the future that if on average there are 30 units in a day then in the upcoming months how many units can be sold you will have to multiply with the respective time period this is something which is a simple average now my tone is a little bit slow because it is a recently added topic uh, in paper ma recently means it's more than a year so uh, but this is also examinable arithmetic mean arithmetic mean is a simple average and you calculate the average for the future forecasting because we are uh, understanding the forecasting okay let's now move on to the this heading what is this heading this is a complex mean arithmetic mean see what is written it is written the complex now what do you mean by the term arith that was a simple mean 
that was a simple average simple mean average now what is this arithmetic mean complex because it is complex so my tone is slow in a complex mean you will be calculating average you will be calculating what average okay you will be calculating average in a frequency distribution now what do you mean by that term frequency distribution see the english word frequency distribution that means you have to distribute something you have to distribute something the thing which you are distributing the thing which you are distributing is x for example you have got sweets there is a box of sweets you have there's a box of chocolates and you are distributing to the people that means group data which data group data now you are distributing a chocolate to people so chocolate is the subject matter chocolate is a subject matter chocolate is what it is a subject matter i'm giving you a very sweet example chocolate now you are distributing to the people the group data the, the group of people now that that th on which x is distributing x is distributing something on something which is known as f f f is a frequency distribution group data so something which you are distributing the main subject matter will be shown as x and the x is distributing on something which is x upon f x upon f okay x upon f for example for example cost per unit so cost is x units is f okay for example number two example uh, number next example is like for example uh, i I, uh, I will be using this students number of days students absent so that's students absent on per day so main subject matter is not the day the subject matter which is a visible to me that is in front of me chocolates the students this is X this is F okay so uh, how will you decide something X or F just see the question in a very simple language i am not using the statistical hard jargons i am explaining in a simple language that is what my habit is to explain in a very simple language some data something which is being distributed will be shown as x and x is distributing over something that is f okay so it is very important thing to uh, remember and noting now i am now going on to the uh, next slide now see this is saying students absent and number of days i am writing two things days per student days per student does not make sense it does not make sense what does make sense students per day that makes sense which means students are x and number of days are f now calculate the arithmetic mean whenever you are having a complex arithmetic mean then you are calculating summation of fx upon summation of f now how see here x and f and we will have to take fx as well one two three four x is one four six and three that uh, the total is summation of x i don't need it what is f f is six twelve five and two 
the total would become summation of f that is 25 now see uh, what is the interpretation of this thing interpretation of this line number one this line what does it this indicate that in six days one student was absent in six days one student was absent just understand my words catch my words in six days one students one student was absent so that means six that means six monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday there are six days and one student was absent in every class sometimes mr a sometimes mr b forget that now next in 12 days four students were absent so that means a total 40 48 and here total 30 and here total 6 now that is summation of fx that is total 6 48 30 and 6 90 now what is the complex mean summation of fx upon summation of f that is 90 over 25 the answer would be 3.6 you know what does this indicate this indicate on average on average 3.6 students were absent 3.6 students were absent per day that means on average that means on average 3.6 students were absent in a day so this is the interpretation of the complex calculation why because it is a frequency distribution this is a group data this is not a single data this is a group data because many of the students and many of the days you are not calculating on a specific days you are calculating for the whole days and see that there are 25 days you are making a data for 25 days 25 days are being grouped into different categories based on the students absent so that is a frequency distribution <clears throat> one four six oh, oh all right all right uh, students sorry that was uh, that was uh, i think a calculation error one four uh, thank you so much for uh, noticing what's your name i should thank you with your name i shall thank you okay uh, now uh, see this is one four six and six so six twos are 12 sorry that was a calculation error six twos are 12 so now that was six twelve plus five plus two that's 25 six 48 30 and 12 that is 96 now that is 96 now making a mistake ensures that i am not a robot as well 96 over 25 that is 3.84 students just correct the figures i mistakenly wrote the wrong figure that is 3.84 but the concept is the essential thing to memorize that is 3.84 students were absent on per day on average this is a complex calculation Uh, let's now move on to the next uh, question that is a median now what is a median what is a median median is something sorry median is something which is a mid value which is a mid value for example okay this is any value okay this is any value like complaints like number of students absent like uh, the cost any value i am saying it any value any value the value was 10 13 9 7 and 5 now these are the values which are not arranged these are the value which are not arranged what you are supposed to do 
first you should arrange first you should arrange in a sequential order in a sequential order all right ascending order in an ascending order that is number 7 then number 9 then number 10 then number 13 and then number 15 now which one is the middle value it's 10 so that is known as the median average that is known as the median average you should need to arrange the data first in an ascending order not the descending order in an ascending order and then find out the middle value that is known as the median average now uh, let's uh, move on to the next slide that is the mode average and what is mode average it is also the mode average for example mode average is that value mode is that value that occurs most often that occurs most often most often means most of the time most of the time I'm giving you the example assume that uh, you are having your uh, you are selling cell phone I am writing example that we are selling that we are selling mobile phone we are selling mobiles okay and uh, we received complaints and we received complaints now what are the complaints we had received there was a Wi-Fi issue there was a Wi-Fi issue three times which means three complaints how many complaints I received for the Wi-Fi issue from three customers now I received the signal issue signal that my mobile phone is not ca catching the signals and that was uh, seven times which means seven complaints now uh, another complaint I received that was the battery issue that is the uh, that is for example two times that means two complaints which complaint uh, i had re i had re re uh, received repeatedly can you people can you people write here the signal issue now the signal issue so that means that is the mode value that means that is the mode value this is a mode this is the mode average this is a mode average okay this is the mode average now i should write another example that is example number two that was example number one uh, example number two is that for example for example there are complaints and there are number of weeks zero complaint one complaint four complaint that is number of weeks that is five weeks that is 12 weeks and that is one week uh, uh sorry it is one time these are not the weeks these are the time number of weeks in a week five times can you people tell me the mode value here can you people tell me the mode value here in the second example what is the mode value some people might be taking the four that is wrong no you have to see the times there is a 12 times that particular one complaint i have received 12 times particular one complaint i have received 12 times so here mode value is one that particular one complaint i had received 12 times you have to see that times you have to see that times the particular complaint is being received that the particular issue is being highlighted the particular value is being repeated that one uh, 
uh, you can see that uh, here if you people if any people if anyone of you is confused related to this for c four complaints receive one time that means total four and that is total 12 12 times i have received the same complaint so that is a mode value mode value is that which is repeatedly observed that is the mode average Okay, let's now move on to the next slide. That is the expected value. Now, what do you mean by the term expected values? See, expected values, this is also the average value. This is also the average value, but it does consider the probabilities of all the possible outcomes. For example, for example, I am writing an example that uh, there is a project that there is a project and i am expecting i am expecting dollar ten thousand profit or dollar fifteen thousand profit all right so one would be calculating the average like that way 10 plus 15 upon 2 ten thousand plus fifteen thousand upon two that is dollar twelve thousand five hundred you know what is this figure this is the simple average this is the simple average we are not going to understand this thing here ev expected value this is also average but but with respect to the probabilities now what are the probabilities sir project i am expecting profit 10000 i am expecting profit 15000 and my past experience shows that there are 80 percent chances for this and there are 20 percent chances for this now i need to calculate the average based on the weightage i need to calculate the average ev expected value is equal to summation of px how will you calculate that so simple what is p p means probability x means the subject matter x is the subject matter now what are the probability number one that is 80 percent chances i will be receiving 10,000. that would be 8,000. and 20 percent chances i would be receiving 15,000. now that is 3,000. okay 15,000 multiplied by 20 percent that is 3,000. so 8 plus 3 8 plus 3 11 000 is my ev expected value now these are my expected values based on the expectation of the probabilities based on the expectation of the probabilities in a simple average the probabilities are not being considered but in evs the probabilities are being considered all right so expected values are basically uh, when we can allot when we can allot probabilities to different situations and probabilities 
come from past experience. And probabilities comes from the past experience. I'm not saying these probabilities. My experience is saying these probabilities from the past experience. All right. So again, I am highlighting that thing. My past experience is saying these probabilities. Once again, my past experience is saying me these probabilities. I am not saying that. So that is the expected values. Uh, let's now move on to the question of expected values. And uh, this is the last question. And what I had planned for the webinar, Alhamdulillah, we have completed all the aspects. And there is one just question. And you are required to calculate the expected values. You might be confusing that Sir Harris, where are probabilities? And Sir Harris is saying that probabilities are in the question. We have to spot it. Where are the probabilities? C, find out X and Y. Can you people tell me what is X here? Can you people tell me what is X here? Number of units or days? Just answer the question. What is X? Come on, students. What is X? Yes, number of units. Number of units are X. C. Number of units are X. And these are number of days. That is the frequency F. And here you need to calculate the probabilities. Now, how many days are there? How many days are there? 40, 60, 80, and 20. There are how many days? Make it total. The total number of days are 40 plus 60 plus 80 plus 20. The total days are 40, 60, 80, 20. 200 days. How many days? 200 days. And you need to calculate the probability for each and every for each and every frequency distribution. Now C number one. 40 upon 200 multiply by 100. C number two. 60 upon 200 multiply by 100. C number three. 80 upon 200. Multiply by 100. C number four. 20 upon 200 multiplied by 100. Now, here are probabilities. Here are probabilities, and that becomes 20%. 60 upon 200 becomes 30%, 40%, and 10%. And there is total 100%. All right. So we will be calculating expected values that is summation of Px. Now, summation of Px, this is P and this is X. What is P? P is 20%, 30% probability. P means probability. 20%, 30%, 40%, 40%, and 10%. And what are X? The X are units 100 daily, 200, 300, and 400. And you will be calculating PX and then make it sum. Make it sum. Summation of PX. EV is equal to summation of PX. And the amounts are 20, 60, 120, and 40. The total are 240 units. And how will you interpret this thing? How will you interpret this thing? What is the description that is on average? 
240 units per day 240 units per day that is 240 units per day this is the interpretation of this of this thing uh students i would like to uh, say one thing to all of you i would like to say one thing to all of you that be confident be confident for your paper number one thing number two is that if uh, any one of you is not on the whatsapp group if any one of you is not on the uh, whatsapp group you people can freely whatsapp me at my this number plus 92333113959 okay you people can whatsapp me if you are not on the whatsapp group i can add you over there and and this is a uh, day 5 and this was the last uh, this is the last day and i had tried my level best to cover the entire uh the entire content which i had uh, already discussed the entire content which i had already discussed and this was my um i can show you this was my lecture plan so this was my uh, lecture plan we had covered we had covered standard costing budgeting performance measurement and these includes approximately 30% of your course plus some mcqs worth 10 to 20% okay so 50 50 60% your uh, exam contents are covered then costing techniques data analysis statistical and including forecasting whatever the day plan uh, the plan which i had made alhamdulillah we had covered that thing and this was the this was the last example of this uh, uh this uh, webinar uh, i hope that uh, this uh, webinar had uh, given you some benefits uh, uh, i need uh, i need a feedback i need a feedback uh, on your experience for this webinar come on do type something is it beneficial was it productive obviously i cannot say it 100% but whatever the uh, but whatever the contents we had discussed uh, it was a productive session uh, what i believe so but you people as a student can uh, better tell me can better leave your feedback okay thank you so much for your valued feedback mushed anif Saba Bilal Habib Daniel City Zuleka Raniman thank you so much Daniel Habib Anis uh thank you so much for your valued feedback and this uh, according to according to me I tried my level best to cover uh, uh, the areas which I could uh, cover within this specified time period of 5 days that is 15 hours now all the recorded sessions are available at vimeo.com/acca pakistan you people can freely access to the recorded sessions if you want to revise that thing and my whatsapp number are here right at the bottom of the screen plus 9233313959 and uh, you can also notice that thing you can also notice here this is my whatsapp number once again and i really wish you people good luck for your exams be confident and try to solve each and every question of your official exam kit okay so i really wish you people good luck for your exams good luck take care of yourself allah is bye bye